It was my father who wrote this. I am indeed sorry for the inconvenience caused in this instance, but due to my wife's health, which is being greatly impaired by the absence of our children, I am forced to cause you this inconvenience. Each file tells a story. It's not every day that we get to, to make breakthrough connections for people, but for a collection like this, which has more than 20,000 stories of individuals and families, making this available to people like Susan and her family, it's been deeply gratifying to be able to fill in gaps in individuals and family stories that they may not have known. An enormous collection of case files that the museum has that were from the American Friends Service Committee, which is the Quaker Relief Organization. They have traditionally tried to help individuals as humans in need, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of ethnic background. For example, the Quakers were among the very early abolitionist leaders in the anti-slavery movement in the United States. During World War I in 1917, to respond to the enormous need of especially children and other vulnerable populations away from the front lines of the war, the American Quakers founded a group called the American Friends Service Committee, or AFSC. That work continued up into the 1930s. After Kristallnacht, with the sudden flood of, of people needing assistance in fleeing Nazi Germany, the AFSC created a refugee division. That's the division that was tasked with helping individuals and families. The case files that we have are the files that were created by that division. A few years ago, I came across a file for the Hilsenrath children in France. They had been in a children's home uh, in France after having been separated from their parents. Their parents had made it to the United States separate from their children, and they were desperate to try to reunite when I entered the names into Google, I was surprised to see that little Susie Hilsenrath is actually Susan Worsinger, who is one of the volunteers here at the museum. I get this envelope in the mail, and I'm so excited because I started to read some of these papers and things that I just didn't even remember, letters my father wrote that I never knew that existed. I was born in Bad Kreuznach, Germany in 1929. As soon as Hitler came into power, my father lost his store. I couldn't go to public school. And then it was Kristallnacht. So that's when my parents decided we needed to get out. So then my father found a lady who was smuggling children into France. And we went to a little town called Brouvernay. And then I found out that my parents had come to the United States and that they had gotten in touch with whoever they could possibly get in touch with to try and find us. For me as an individual, I had this vague idea of how I got over here, but here I had a individual records exactly how I got to come to the United States. Taken together, this collection sheds light on the refugee experience and on the, the experiences of those trying to help refugees in ways that no other collection that we have can quite do. I think it's going to be a record for, for my children and grandchildren, and not only for mine, but for all kinds of generations. Until fairly recently, we've never had a, even a list of the names, and so now that we have that list and it's, it's being made available through our website, I'm hoping to be able to make many more connections with people like Susan that other people can help to answer questions that they may have wondered about for many years.